if you want to hit the ball longer, which most golfers would raise their hands for, we certainly would. You want to hit it more consistently, again, hand raise. Moving your feet correctly throughout the golf swing will go a long way into doing that. And for many of you, just doing this correctly will actually let you have more distance, more fun playing the game, but just by learning how to work the feet. We're going to show you how to move your feet better by talking about the setup, showing you what needs to happen there. And we're going to talk about what's got to happen in the backswing, then in the transition, all the way into the downswing. So this is really where we see footwork go off the rails, and it's literally before you pull the club back. So this is a very common thing we see in golf swings. So I'll set up to it. Uh -huh. All right, get my, get my setup that I want. Okay, I'm ready to go. Okay. What's I'm, wrong with this? Well, close your eyes. See, I even <laughs> barely have to touch them. We do that a lot in lessons. I'll have someone get set up, right. have them close their eyes. They don't know I'm going to come in there because they can't brace me. Right. And then I'll touch them with one finger and they go, whoa. And yeah. that, that didn't feel like you pushed very hard no, and I put me off balance. You. So what I had going on there is I really could feel my toes up. And, and some golfers have told us they want to feel like they can lift their toes at setup. That puts everything into your heels. The problem with that is that's okay if you don't move the club, but we're going to move the club in the golf swing. Now when I start moving the club and the club starts to work behind me, I've got to offset that by some early extension and something to offset all of my weight now being behind me. Exactly. And the way we teach the setup, you know, bend over the fence, crack yep. the knees, puts the weight kind of on the front of the shoelace here. Yep. And that gets you in a good spot to kind of move the club where you can stay in balance. So let's see you do the setup. Okay. I'll all be right. a 200 pound wind. All right. So I'm trying not to cheat. <laughs> so close yep. your eyes. Yep. Good, yeah. and I can't do it in either direction. Right, eventually you'll, okay. and it's a, a good way to practice is just rock back and forth and kind of find the spot just under the front of that first shoelace that puts you in a pretty good spot. And if you're looking at pressure plates, force plates, right, we'll show you that information. You want to basically be over the arches to slightly towards the balls of the feet. And again, depending on how big your feet are, how long your torso is, that's going to vary. But you certainly don't want to be set up behind the arches and definitely not in the heels. You should see the whole footprint or slightly light heel at set. Here's the pressure mapping of a five-time PGA Tour winner. So you can see the numbers of how the footwork we're talking about actually happens in a swing. You're looking down from the top of the golfer, so the target is to the left of your screen. His left foot is here on the left, his right on the right. The white bars on each side are his pressure amounts for each foot. In this frame, they're showing us that he's perfectly balanced with equal pressure amounts under each foot. The next number is how far apart his heels are, so his stance width. And as you look up to his feet, the thing to notice here are these small white balls on each foot. They're showing you his center of pressure for each foot. As you can see, his center of pressure is right around the ball of each foot, or from your perspective as the player, right around the bottom of your shoelaces. As we just discussed, you can see his entire foot represented here in his heat maps, but also notice how he's not sitting into his heels and doesn't have a lot of weight, a lot of pressure under his heels. So from here, he's ready to move. All right, so you're, you're where you need to be at setup. Now let's talk about the movement in the backswing and a really simple rule of thumb with really, when you're talking about the arms, the knees, the legs, is you want opposite tapping across the body. So you don't want both legs doing the same thing in the golf swing, both arms doing the same thing, and certainly don't want the pressure in both feet, both feet doing the same thing. Exactly, so if I set up here, and uh, we always like to teach this little trigger move to the left to get things moving, so kind of just a lateral motion, no rocking back and forth to the toe. And as you start back, you're gonna go on to this right foot a little heavier, mm -hmm. stays in relatively the same spot. You don't wanna drive it into the heel. Kind of, we, we like to talk about where it shifts kind of where you would tie your shoes. Is it. So it moves back just slightly, but and not into the heel. Part of that is, you know, the hip winding right. back. And when you do that, this left knee is going to bend more than it was at address. And when that happens, that sh will, should, and will lighten your left heel just a little. Now, it doesn't need to come off the ground. A lot of times I don't like that. If the players overdo it because it makes some early extent on the backswing, but just feeling that you almost lighten it in the shoe a little bit is usually enough to get the knee action correct and things work kind of up through the chain correctly. Right, and we when you look at great players, that's one of the hallmarks that we see a lot of times is that weight coming out of the left heel. And again, you'll see variations from it actually coming up to if they're standing in grass, you're not going to see it move much at all, but the heel is being lightened in the backswing. You'll see it on pressure plates. And 
that's an indication that it's moving the opposite of what the trail foot does because the trail foot is really putting the whole foot on the ground, not just rolling into the heel. We don't want to do that because that takes a long time to come out of the heel on the downswing. So you want the whole trail foot firmly into the ground and you're lightening your right foot, your lead foot, I'm sorry, not right foot, your lead foot to get you a nice turn because you got to have some place to move in the downswing. Here at Left Arm Parallel on the backswing, you can see the opposite principle in effect. He's lightened his left heel while shifting and turning into his right side. But notice how he hasn't sunk into and buried his pressure deep into that right heel. That's something we see calls golfers a lot of trouble, primarily because it takes a long time to get out of that heel and creates more trouble with your timing. Here he's at 70-30 pressure from left foot to right foot, which is a pretty common ratio we see in good swings here at Left Arm Parallel. He's shifted enough, but he hasn't gone too deep or too far to the right to make his move forward exaggerated or even late. So you're moving to the top of your swing now. You've got weight in your trail foot, pressure in your trail foot, not trail heel, but it'll be pretty much the whole foot should be represented, okay, when looking at a pressure plate. And the heel has gotten lighter on the lead side. Right. All right, what happens as we go in and out of the top of the swing? So reaching the top of the swing, I have some recentering where I come back mm -hmm. towards the middle of my stance. So the weight is going to go from my right foot, start working back towards the middle of the stance. Right. And then in the transition, the heels, you know, get the whole foot gets back on the ground again. And then I start, start the process of lightening my trail foot. So you're almost going to have a mirror, pretty much a mirror image of what you did to get into the top. Now that's going to be shifted to the front side to get out of the top. Yeah, it's like it's just a, like a little dance mode, really. It's this rhythmic motion where you lighten the heels up. You can add that and start making it bigger and make have yourself a pretty nice looking swing, especially where it starts from the ground up. And the most common thing that we see with our amateur golfers is they'll go both heels in the backswing, right? We saw that at setup, and then the downswing because you've got to come out of that. Now they go both toes in the downswing, and that handcuffs really cripples your ability to rotate properly in the downswing, which none of us want to have to deal with. Now here at Left Arm Parallel in the downswing, you're seeing just about the exact mirror of what we saw at this point in the backswing. His pressure is now shifted to 70-30, favoring his front foot. He's now lightening his right heel as he shifts into and lights up his entire left foot. Where golfers get themselves in trouble trying to make this move from back foot to front foot is they often shove too much of their mass forwards towards the target. The better way to think about this is to shift your pressure by lightening the side you want to leave. So in this case, lightening your trail foot. So here he's getting off of his back foot by lightening that foot. That's a big difference compared to trying to push off your trail foot. Pushing off that back foot just increases pressure under the foot. So out of transition, and you're mirroring now onto the left side, your lead side. So you're, you're, right heel now is starting to lighten as you move towards the middle of your left foot, your lead foot. Right, so the, the weight is into the foot again. Mm -hmm. The right heel is starting to lighten as I'm coming down here. This gets the knee kind of into this uh, position here where it's kind of vertical, mm -hmm. right, down toward impact. And that same time, the weight is going from kind of the ball of my foot and starting to work back towards the heel. And in the finish, you'll see a lot of guys kind of get the toe off the ground a little just because the right. hip is 90 to the target now. And with drivers, you maybe see that foot start to float around because they've loaded it so quickly and so and jump. fast in the front swing that they're literally getting themselves airborne on the front side. But the main takeaway here with the downswing it happens so quickly is you're just doing the opposite you did in the backswing. And you want to avoid like crazy doing both movements with each foot. You don't want to go toes at the same time or heels at the same time in the downswing or backswing. Here at Impact, you see the left foot pressure start to move more towards the center of his foot. The right heel is completely gone now, and the total pressure increase from left arm parallel to Impact has only increased a few percentage points. This is something we see quite often with really solid iron players. We often prefer to see the small increase because it often stabilizes the lower body and keeps it from drifting too far down the fairway. Keep these images in mind as you work on your footwork. You'll be in some great company when you start to work your feet like this during your swing. So proper footwork in the golf swing would fall under that. It's extremely simple, right? But we see it done poorly every single day. Simple does not always mean easy. You have to work on these things. Do it slow, film yourself, put the camera down at foot level. Yeah. Right, film how your feet work because a lot of us don't don't are not aware of it. We don't know how our feet are working. You'll get a really quick idea of how that happens 
Then you start to train it, add speed as it gets better, and then you're going to develop this magical footwork that we call it, tour-like footwork for your golf swing, which in many of you is going to be the missing piece to the swing you have now. If you found this video helpful and you need more help with your consistency, we want to help you with that. Go to the first comment below this video, you'll see a link. Click on that link, we'll take you to our number one consistency drill to help you hit the ball more solidly and more consistent every time you're out on the course.